Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dr. Umar, first and foremost thank you for uh, the session just now uh, I was wondering because since you've studied in Tarim and I've heard a lot of good things uh, about the people in Tarim and the qualities that they have back there despite the poverty um, mind sharing the things that you've learned the qualities of the people there that maybe we can uh, apply here um, uh, with uh, regards with the uh, uh, the things that you've shared just now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Actually, um, yeah, I, s I spent some time, limited time in Tarim. Actually, two of my roommates from Darul Mustafa are here today. Sheikh Mohammed Fawzi Abdulaziz and his brother Mohammed Fadl Abdulaziz. Now he's getting very shy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I would say when we... the the purpose, and it's not only in Tarim, by the way, it's wherever people of khair are, like people who are focused on, on living the reality of uh, this, this, these spiritual you know, viewpoints that I'm talking about, living the reality of practicing the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is ultimately, ultimately, as Ustad Iqbal mentioned, it's adab, it's akhlaq, it's character, it's good character. And those were people who who embodied that character. And again, it's not just in that in that region. It's maybe even the descendants of those people who go to other regions. Maybe even other spiritual, um, you know, paths in in of the Muslim scholars. You'll find it all over the world, actually. But they are rare to find, you know, in a concentrated area. And I think the things that struck me about the time there is that um, it's just perspective, you know, like to them, what is the most important thing? It may not be anything that we think is important in this life, you know, or where we are in our day-to-day -day life. Um, and uh, I always think about our time there, you know, and, you know, I don't know if um, my, my roommates remember, but you remember, you remember we had a roommate, um, Fozi and Father, we had a roommate, uh, his name was uh, uh, Abdullah, Abdullah bin Yahya, bin Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salam. He was a quiet guy, quiet guy in our room, a Yemeni kid from Ainat, from the village of Ainat. And I, just, I would observe him sometimes, and one of the things that always struck me was like, just he was quiet, he didn't really like interact that much, but there was one time I saw him cutting his nails, okay, and he's, he's bending down, it's, it's like Jum'ah, it's Sunnah to cut your nails, you know. So he's cutting his nail, he takes up the nail clipper and he puts it down. He picks it up and he puts it down again. Then he starts clipping. So I said, Abdullah, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you doing this? And he said, well, I just wanted to make sure I have the right niya. I wanted to make sure my intention was right. I didn't know if there was a dua I should say or a specific niya I should say. So he said, so in the end, I just said, Nawaituma nawa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa while cutting nails. And to me, I was just completely like shocked by this. Like, such a simple thing he's doing, but he wants to know whatever state the Prophet was in when he was doing this. I want to emulate that. And so, that's when you think about, you know, these thought patterns, and you have to really be conscious of the role that Allah is placing. You know, different things in your life, different actions you're doing. What consequence does it have in your relationship to Allah? 